Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Pokemon, the podcast where we talk everything and anything Pokemon. And this one's a bit of a freestyle episode. I've had a pretty busy week. I uh, had a bit of a, uh, a dissertation paper to write up. I don't think I've ever mentioned that. I don't know if I ever did, but I do take classes and I am kind of pursuing my doctorate uh, in in uh, in education. So uh, I've been kind of... Uh, all over the place when it comes to my research and stuff. So I did spend quite a good bit of time this week doing that. Uh, I have also been busy working with my other podcast. And if I didn't also already mention about that, I do like a movie review podcast with like two other of my friends. And so we've had to catch up on some movies um, because it was kind of like a semi busy weekend. And then uh, Pokemon Unite just consume or yeah, Pokemon Unite just consumes a majority of my life as well as most other people from what I'm seeing the reception on social media and uh what else is going on and I'm gearing up for the uh Halo Infinite uh tech preview which I think as of what two three minutes ago it just went live uh so obviously uh after I'm done recording this episode I'll be kind of editing and uh playing uh, the in Halo Infinite flight uh, preview uh, at the same time, which uh, I'm really, really excited. I've never shared that before. Like, Pokemon is probably my number one big franchise passion. But if it wasn't Pokemon, like, a close uh, tie to number one is Halo. Like, I am... probably. I mean, I am just as obsessed about Halo as I am with Pokemon when it comes to, like... You know, if you see my stuff, it's just like, it's it's always those two things. If it's not Pokemon, then it's a Halo-themed thing. If it's not a Halo-themed thing, it's a Pokemon-themed thing. But I think I have, as far as merchandise goes, I have more Pokemon merchandise than I do Halo merchandise. But I, I, I really should post this on Instagram or something. But my living room setup, right, I have the TV in the middle... And I have one bookshelf on one side that's all my, like, not all of my Halo merch, but a good majority of my Halo merch. And then I have another bookshelf on the other side that's a good majority of my Pokemon merchandise. Uh, merchandise. And then above the TV, there's, like, wall space there that I can, that I have a Halo poster and I have a Pokemon poster, the 25th anniversary poster. So, I, I don't know. To me, it's just, like, it looks really cool. And I'm like, man, my, my two favorite things, like... And just to think, like, who who normally would think someone who's into a first-person shooter game as well as a kind of meant-for-kids RPG-ish Pokemon game? Like, those two usually, I don't think a lot of people talk about them in the same sentence, uh, let alone in the same conversation. Uh, so I just kind of, I don't know, not necessarily pride myself, but like, you know what? I, I think I'm cool for that. I, I, I Like, I, I like that people can have varied interests like that because you know other people have some random combinations of like you know maybe they really like uh call of duty but also low-key they like toy story video game from like sega genesis or whatever you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying um but anyway yeah so extremely busy week uh which means I didn't have exactly like an outline for this episode. Usually I have like a list of bullet points. I'm like, okay, I got to cover this. I got to talk about this. Um, I'm not going to this time around. Uh, so that's why this is kind of referred to as a freestyle episode. So we'll kind of go through the usual uh, video game updates and whatnot. Uh, I know there's a big update on Masters uh, because they just uh, have sent out a like a what's it called the director's message or whatever leading up to their two-year anniversary but i'm not going to necessarily go into all of that um because there's a lot of cool stuff there and i don't want to like you know g uh not give it enough time to like let it sink in and not like give enough of my opinion on it because i i actually have to have the time to reread it and make sure i understood everything um because there's there's a couple of major things that they introduced in, in that message and uh there's like a leak coming out uh, about a particular sync pair which is extremely interesting and kind of curious i'm kind of curious why they went decided this route but i'm gonna probably save that for next week um as far as uh other news goes um there is one bigger topic i'll kind of get towards uh, uh save it for the last episode the only thing i really have is like a bullet point here is obviously who the, the pokemon is going to be for this episode for the pokedex trivia so at least i have that kind of raring to go but otherwise uh let's go ahead and go through some of the stuff let's, let's start with pokemon center 
because I actually have not talked about Pokemon Center uh, in a couple weeks. Um, I didn't mention Pokemon Center last week, even though I think in my head when I was recording the episode, I was like, don't forget Pokemon Center. Don't forget Pokemon Center. And lo and behold, I did. Um, the last time we talked about Pokemon Center, uh, we had the Gigantamax Snorlax and Gigantamax Gengar plushes, um, which as of right now, the time of recording is they're both sold out. Uh, I think the Gengar was the first first one sold out. Ooh, I don't remember. Yes, I think definitely the Gengar was the first one to sell out, um, and then the Snorlax shortly after. Anyway, the week following that, uh, we got the next Evolution pins, which are the Hoenn starters. So you got Mudkip, Torchic, and Trico, uh, which are pretty cool starters. Um, I'm not bad. This is, oh man, I don't know if people are going to hate me for this, but Mudkip is my least favorite water starter out of all the generations. Like, I I like Swampert. I'm not a big fan of Marsh Tom's design, and I'm not a big fan of Mudkip's design. Honestly, this was the one generation that I almost, almost decided to go for the grass starter because I really love Trico. And I think what also made me love Trico more was the way they uh, kind of represented him in the anime uh, with Ash's Trico and uh, uh, what is it? The stick or toothpick kind of thing he had. Um, Trico was just really, really cool. And then Grovile was such a cool design and Septile was even cooler. Like they did very, very well with Trico. Torchic, I like Torchic. I'm not a fan of uh, Combuskin. Blaziken's kind of cool, but I didn't really want a firefighting type. Um, and so, like, that one, it was okay with me. But Mudkip, man, it was really hard to kind of get through its evolution just to get to Swampert. Mega Swampert is pretty cool, though. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm pretty sure I'll bring that up again in a Hoenn conversation later down the line. But those evolution pins are there if need be. Now, the interesting thing uh, about the next item... We got the next Pikachu Moods collection figure, which is Pikachu Confused. Uh, it's got Pikachu eating a type of berry, which I'm sure the the inside joke here is that the, but the berry is like some sort of berry that obviously boosts some sort of stat and then leaves the user confused, which makes sense for this. Uh, what, what's interesting, though, is that, first of all, this particular item did not sell out immediately. Um, I think it took it about an hour or two until it officially sold out. But what's more interesting, number two, is that it wasn't ev- available to the public per se instantly right off the bat when it was live. So I don't know if I brought this up before, um, and I probably should have. But what seems to me that Pokemon has been doing to kind of get around the bot situation is that to those that are subscribed to the Pokemon Center emails, you'll get a email saying, hey, this figure is now available. Uh, click here and it'll, you know, go ahead and add it to your cart or whatever. When you click on the link, it takes you straight to the item. You can add the cart to the item. You can check out. I think the first time I noticed this was when they did the last Pikachu figure. Um, and then they also did it for the parade, the water starter parade. So anyway... Uh, what, you know, that seems like normal thing, right? Obviously it's a way for them to, to notify you and just to take it straight there instead of having to go through all the website and go through new releases, and all of that. However, when they sent you that email at that exact time, if you try to go on the Pokemon center website, you know, just on a fresh tab and then go to new releases, it would not show up. And in most cases, it wouldn't show up up to an hour after the email was sent out. So it almost seems that these emails are private links, right? Because they're assuming that if people sign up for these emails, they're the real people. They're not bots. So then when you click on that link, you have that access. It's kind of like insider early access to these items. So that way bots can't get to them right away and just buy them all up. Because then you can't go on... You, you can't even search for it because I think it was the parade one. I clicked on the link, added it to my cart, bought it. But then I went to Pokemon Center, went to new releases, wasn't there. I was like, okay, let me type in, you know, parade. All the parade stuff showed up except for that water starter one. So I was like, okay, let me pre- type in celebration parade. Not, nothing showed up other than the other parade items, not the water starter one. So if you are looking to really get first dibs on a lot of this stuff, 
uh, you are definitely going to want to be subscribed to their email. Now, if you're like, oh, I already have an account, but I don't get the emails, double check your settings, double check your account, you know, info and stuff like that. Make sure your email's right. Check your spam folder and just, you know, make sure that you have checked that you want the emails because uh, that seems to be uh, the best way to get, you know, at least a chance to get these items before they go completely sold out. Because right now that Pikachu mood figure is sold out, but it did take a while. Um, but I, I think that's just an interesting take. I like that. I like that if you are subscribed to emails, you're looking at them con- frequently, that you're kind of, you know, given a little bit of like a, a reward in a sense or an incentive to be subscribed to it that, hey, it gives you kind of like an early access kind of thing. Um, so I just thought that was very, very interesting and, and that I just wanted to express that I think it's a good idea. Um, and I hope that they kind of continue this, especially when the Pikachu 25th anniversary skateboards come up. Uh, cause I do, I do want to get a 25th anniversary skateboard just to display it. And so if this is that, if that's the route they're going to take, then, uh, then so be it. Like I, I'm, I much prefer it that way. Um, I, I think I like it better that if I lose my chances to get anyone, that it's to someone who subscribes to the email and clicked on that link, as opposed to like a bot that can just go through the whole process of just checking, uh, adding the item to the cart, checking it out, buying it, whatever. And not that I understand the entire bot process. I just... It just seems like this is just an extra step that bots don't really know how to do just yet. All right. Now, after that, they did release uh, the pre-orders for Diamond, and, uh, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl video game, as well as the Legends uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus video game. Now, you could say, oh, well, I'm, I'm already pre-ordering GameStop. I got my money there, or I'm pre-ordering it you know, Target, wherever the pre-orders are available. But... The incentive here, which I think is really nice, um, that these are these have like little bonuses to them. You know, I have not seen a pre-order elsewhere where you get like a keychain or like some sort of promo card or something like that. But here we do at Pokemon Center. So if you pre-order Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, you actually get the Sinnoh Starters plush keychains. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's a choice of one. You actually get all three. Uh, Turtwig, Chimchar, and Piplup. And now if you also pre-order the Pokemon Legends Arceus through Pokemon Center, you get a free sitting cutie Arceus, which I think is really cool, which also, just kind of side tangent here, kind of makes me le- uh, leads me to believe that we're going to get the Sinnoh sitting cuties by the time uh, either the game Brilliant, Sh- uh, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl comes out or by the time a Legends, uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus comes out. So just FYI there. But you get a free sitting cutie, which is pretty cool. Um... This is the only place that you get pre-order bonuses. I don't know anywhere else that gives you pre-order bonuses. So if you are going to pre-order these games and you don't mind waiting, you know, midday, uh, evening, whatever, for when it arrives to your your place, then and you want pre-order bonuses, then pre-order it from Pokemon Center. I think that is going to be the best uh, idea, the best value, probably the best plan of attack when it comes to these games. Otherwise, if you can't wait and you want to wait and you want to play it at midnight. Then, you know, go to your local Walmart. Well, actually, you can't even go to Walmart anymore. Because as far as I know, the Walmart, at least the Walmarts around here in my area, close at 11. So you would have to buy them digitally uh, on on your Switch and just play them when they go live. Uh, But, again, just, you know, there's another option, another route. Then we also got uh, Pokemon plushes, a Mega Rayquaza, and a Mega Gengar. Now, we've had these before. However... The, what's different about them is that they are shiny versions of these Mega uh, Pokemon plushes. So we have a shiny Mega Rayquaza Poke Plush, which is 45 and a fourth inch long. We're talking almost four feet here. And then the Mega Gengar is 13 inches, and it's a shiny Mega, Mega Gengar in all of its white costume glory there. Um, so pretty cool. You know, if you really love these Pokemon and you love their shiny versions, then uh, go for it. Then we also got a Houndoom Sitting Cutie, which I guess didn't drop initially when Johto Sitting Cuties dropped, but it's it's up here in new releases um, if you're looking for it. And then we also got two Pokemon 25th Anniversary Celebration items that were added. They're both caps, or at least one's labeled as a cap, the other one's labeled as a hat. The hat is an all black hat with the 25th Anniversary logo on it. And then the Celebration cap is half black and half gray but the gray part is like the the background design they've been using for the 25th anniversary and then you got the logo there uh i honestly think the celebration cap is better 
I don't know why this one's referred to as a dad hat and the other one is a celebration cap by Cole. I, I'm not sure what the difference there is, um, why they're labeled. It looks like the bill of the hat is a bit different. Like the dad hat has like the curved duck bill look and then the celebration cap has like more of a flat bill. I, I guess that's what makes the difference between a cap and a hat. I don't know. I'm not a hat connoisseur. So uh, I just think by looks, the celebration cap is much better. But the uh, second biggest thing really to drop out of all this is that uh, Pokemon has released a home accents line of items. Uh, this kind of follows with the the home decor. Was it home decor? Was it home accents still? The, uh, the posters, I think that they had, uh, where it had like the Pikachu and Eevee like silhouette kind of stencil designs on them. Uh, this is the same thing only now or the same design it's just now it's on a waste basket it's on a pencil holder it's on a desk organizer a lampshade uh a cube poof cover or, or no it's a it is you get the actual pillow a cube poof i guess that's what it's called uh fleece throw uh throw pillows you get well, these are actually covers so you get four covers in there um what else is there i think that's oh and a mug there's a home accents mug uh it's nice it's quote unquote elegant i guess for your living room uh although it's pretty expensive i mean the q poof is 40 bucks i i, I don't know what a q poof exactly is and what would you use it for uh, i mean it's doesn't it's not it's it's a cube pillow basically um the lampshade is 20 bucks, but what gets me is that the desk organizer is $25. Like this is something you can get for like 5 bucks at Walmart. The only difference here is that it's Pokemon designed, like the home accents design. So is that really worth the $25? But then you get the pencil holder, which is like your tip like if you took like a uh, a can of beans, right? You empty out the beans and then you just cover the outside with some sort of design. That's what this looks like. And it's $15. I, I don't know. Um, the fleece throw is, looks really, really nice. Uh, the waste basket's all right. The, the throw pillow covers would be cool if I had, like, a nice couch and whatnot. But, yeah, these are things I'm going to pass on. Um, I forgot to mention that they also added bookends. But these are, like, your standard. So, like, think of those, those black metal bookends that you would normally find at, like, Walmart or something. But on, on the side of them is a silhouette of a Pikachu, like kind of holding up books, basically, uh, which, you know, it's, it's okay. Um, I, it's definitely not as cool as the, uh, the 25th and are, are they 25th anniversary bookends, but like the silver, uh, Charizard, Venusaur and Blastoise bookends. But I guess if you want something more simplistic and, uh, that, but still expresses Pokemon, I think this would do. Um, $25, I don't know if that's really a, a price worth it. I don't know if that's the, just the Pokemon tax talking, uh, but it's it's still kind of like a nice touch there. And then the really big thing that they dropped on Pokemon Center as of a few days ago, the pre-orders for Evolving Skies for their booster packs, the booster boxes, and of course, the exclusive Pokemon Center ETB boxes. Now remember, these are have different designs. These also have, I think, like metal uh, die counter or metal coin. Um, you also get, I think, a pin in one of, or in, in these as well. But also, mainly that you get 10 booster packs instead of the typical 8 booster packs. And they are 50 bucks. Now, let's be real here. The ETB boxes have already been sold out. Uh, I don't think that was a surprise. It did take a little bit of a uh, bit, a bit of a time to get them to sell out, but they did sell out. No really word or no appearance of whether or not they're going to get restocked. I haven't seen them get restocked, uh, but I'll definitely keep an eye out for that. But there are still pre-orders available for the booster packs as well as the booster box. So if you're looking to get your hands on one of those um, or multiple of those, uh, then you can still pre-order them because uh, they there's no indication of them when i look at the item list they say you can still add to cart so good luck on that if you are looking to collect evolving skies um, this one seems to be a big big set not necessarily like the largest set as far as number of cards 
but in the sense of alternate arts, um, kind of like a collector's uh, set, I probably would, uh, I would say more of a collector set than anything else, just because it's got all the evolutions, the art's beautiful on them, the alternate arts are sick. Uh, yeah, definitely worth getting um, for 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 the looks of these cards. Uh, I don't know about playability. I haven't really looked that much into it, uh, although. Maybe, hopefully soon, I'll be able to give some insight on that. I did start going back to my local comic book shop and kind of starting hosting uh, Pokemon Saturdays for them. Kind of like a learn to play uh, morning event uh, for, for like the kids and stuff. So anyone that wants to come by there and just kind of hang out and just want to learn how to play Pokemon, that's what I'm there for for a couple hours uh, for that shop. So I might start like... Maybe using that time in case no one comes in. Using that time to look more and more into the competitive side of things. But that's it when it comes to the Pokemon Center. Um, it is quite a bit of stuff. Uh, and uh, I don't know how well a lot of that home accent stuff is going to go. But I think like kind of the go-to things right now would be the pre-orders. And then the uh, Evolving Skies uh, pre-orders uh, for the cards. Now, as far as the video game stuff, uh, Pokemon Go, we're going to take a break from that. Um, we're still in the Ultra Unlocks, uh, uh, one, yeah, Ultra Unlocks Week 1 or something like that. Um, Ultra Unlock 2 starts in, in a few days, or at least by the time we'll, we uh, kind of start recording for the next episode. So I'll save my talk for that one. We did get the big August update, so uh, you know what? Next episode, let's just save that as Pokemon Go and Pokemon Masters, because I think we're we're not going to have a whole lot of news. I think the Pokemon news is going to die down a little bit um after this week uh cuz especially since people are still, you know, obsessing over Pokemon Unite uh and and are playing that and um uh, you know, we had a lot of events just recently in Pokemon Go and and Pokemon Masters. I think we're just kind of have I think Pokemon is just going to take a break probably from overloading us or overwhelming us with information uh and you know, we'll be we'll be okay for next week's episode. Um, let's see what else is happening. Uh, Pokemon Masters, uh, they just get, uh, brought back the, the Lurking Evil event, I think it's called. It's the event where you get Mewtwo and Giovanni. I think this is the third time that they brought back this event. Uh, one of the big things, though, is that now the sync grid for Mewtwo is opened up. So if you want to build up the strength of your Mewtwo, you can do so. Uh, I would say so. It's definitely worth it. I just did not too long ago, uh, and it kind of helped me beat a, a particular challenge a lot faster. And then they've also brought back the Latios Legendary Arena event, um, which 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 now has added the three extra missions. I think it's like Gym Leader... Hoenn Trainers and uh, Dr Dragon? No, not Dragon Pokemon. I forget what the third typing is, but I know Hoenn and, and Gym Leaders is definitely um, one subset. Uh, but they brought that back, and right now it's just kind of gearing to set up a lot of the new Sync Pair Scouts that are coming up. We're getting a new story event. Um, the finals, I think, is happening. Uh, I think by the time this episode goes up, the finals is going to happen uh, against uh, Lear and his two... Um, uh, I don't want to call them henchmen, but uh, I, think, I think Sawyer is one of them, and then I forget what the girl's name is. But you have the finals uh, that are happening uh, for the story, which should conclude that, but it's supposed to, like leave like a teaser to help start a new story that they're going to bring about in the game. Uh, and then uh, the summer sync pairs are still there. And then, yeah, I mean, if you, if the summer sync pairs aren't your thing right now, then save your gems because there's a lot more sync pairs that are coming that I think are going to be more worth it than the summer sync pairs. And as far as Pokemon unite goes, they just added a new character. And it's a shame it's not Blastoise. I don't understand. In all the promotion for Pokemon Unite, they're gonna be, they always mention, like, oh, we're going to add these characters. Blastoise was the first slot. And then Gardevoir, and then, like, the mystery third character. Nope, they decided to do Gardevoir first. Which, uh, nothing against Gardevoir. Gardevoir is a cool Pokemon. But I was really hoping for Blastoise. Regardless, uh, Pokemon Unite has added Gardevoir along with the costume for it. You can purchase them in the shop. Uh, I believe they are a uh, attacker. 
some sort of like support attacker i think is that a combo i just know people can use it as a support and i've seen people play it as a support when i've been doing my rounds uh but it's labeled i think as an attacker which from what i also experienced it does deal quite a bit of damage um so you'll kind of sporadically see them in pokemon unite people that have purchased them uh and it's kind of cool that they've already added something new into the game uh Pokemon Unite is still, I think, held really high. Uh, a lot of positive social media talk all over it. Um, people are really getting into it. People are starting to get really serious about it. Um, wanted to make sure that they improved the gameplay. And it, it's it's been awesome. I think Pokemon Unite has been a very fresh... Um, has brought a very fresh take into the Pokemon community. Uh, so kudos to... Uh, what is it? Uh, Timmy? Tencent, right, or whatever the company is uh, that help, um, you know, uh, I guess invest and create Pokemon uh, Unite. I, it's I'm I'm still doing my dailies. This is a game that I generally log in now daily, which is such a weird re- like time restart because for me it's at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and it's it throws me off very much. But it's it, depending on what the daily missions are, it's very very easy. Um, to to just kind of get them done in like half an hour uh hour tops uh depending on how well your play or how well your team plays um but i'm i'm looking forward to finally unlocking greninja which i don't think i get for like another week because that is a free character that they give you uh because i think that's who i mainly want to probably play with right now i'm kind of a toss-up between zero aura and cinderace i do like the speedsters um i've been been doing fairly well with uh, Zera Aura, and I'm I'm finally kind of getting better with Cinderace. Uh, although he still seems a little too fragile for me, but I think I just gotta have to find the right combination of moves uh, to really kind of you know get good with him. Uh, but it, the fact that I'm talking this much about a game that I had probably very somewhat little interest in, I think speaks more uh, volumes of the game itself. Uh, and I'm probably gonna buy that battle pass. Maybe when I'm like, I don't know, maybe in a month. Like, I have till the end of the season, right, to get the Battle Pass. So I got time, uh, but I am definitely looking to uh, invest money into the game, uh, which is uh, something I didn't think I was going to do. All right. Now, as far as anything else goes, um, really, we just have kind of one uh, big headline to talk about. Oh, actually, I apologize. One other update. This, because this just happened this morning. Pokemon Snap, new Pokemon Snap is getting free DLC. It's adding three more areas, and they start off the teaser trailer with um, uh, Mew popping up. So it seems like, you know, one of the po- new Mythic Pokemon you're going to be able to take a photo of is, is going to be, of course, Mythical Mew. Uh, but it also showed off Ralligator. Um, I, I didn't know if ho oh was already in a game or if that was part of a new area i kind of watched a japanese trailer so i was slightly confused um but anyway for alligator looked new uh i'm trying to think oh you have the ability to shrink really really small and go through a map uh and just have like oversized pokemon to look at which is kind of a bizarre mode but it seems like some people are looking forward to checking it out i think the big takeaway here though is that they've added free dlc content to new pokemon snap um, so it's just kind of crazy that it did that well enough to where they decided, okay, let's, let's kind of maybe, and maybe they had us on the chopping block. So like, okay, let's polish this up. Um, let's, let's fix this up, make it look good and then go ahead and give it out to the players. And the fact that it's free, they're not even charging anyone for it. I think most o- other companies would have charged, even if it was like five bucks, they would have done it. Pokemon did not. Uh, so whether the argument becomes, oh, they shipped us an incomplete game, look at this, they could have easily added in, I think is irrelevant to the fact that they given you something for free when most other companies would have definitely charged you for. Um, here's looking at UEA. So uh, you take it for what you will. If you're a new Pokemon Snap fan, boom, there you go. You, you got free content coming your way. I believe it comes out August 3rd or 4th uh early august and not too not too far away sometime next week uh for you guys to play all right now let's get into the kind of major topic that we can uh sort of have a little bit of discussion on which of a it's of course going to be 
that a headline came out saying that there is a live action Pokemon series reportedly in development over at Netflix. This is kind of a a a big deal but also just a really cool concept because right if we we go back and, and look at Detective Pikachu a lot of us were some uh, okay maybe I'm just over exaggerating here but there was a good amount of people that are kind of skeptical about Detective Pikachu when it was first brought out. I was like, mm, wait, the real life Pokemon? Like, how are they going to do this? Like, is it going to look really, really bad CGI? Or, um, you know, are they just not going to pull off some of the Pokemon designs properly? Like, there was a lot of worry and concern over this. And then we get a look at Pikachu and we go, like, oh, that's actually not bad. That's actually pretty good. And voice casted by Ryan Reynolds. It's like, whoa, okay, even better. And then as we got to see the trailer, we saw more of the Pokemon designs. We saw the Bulbasaur. We saw the, the Gengar, the Blastoise, uh, the Torterra. Like, it looked good. Uh, the Mewtwo design was good. Um, and it, after watching the movie, it was like, this is probably the best video game uh, adaptation movie, I guess. Uh, I think than any other a video game movie has come out like i can't like the only one uh, that maybe uh can rival it uh even though it may not be considered in the same category is like maybe the witcher on netflix i haven't watched it personally but a lot of people really love the witcher netflix series um and i'm trying to think if there's anything else like mortal kombat does this pale in compar- comparison to that uh obviously the mario brothers movie pales in comparison to that although for some it might be a guilty pleasure movie um but it was just it was just really, really cool. Now, one thing that I had talked about with my other buddies about this on our other podcast about why I think also made this movie uh, or contributed to this movie being successful was that it was not a, for the lack of a better term, canonical movie. Right. It's not like they took red and blue and adapted those video games or right? it's not like they took, you know, diamond and pearl and adapted those video games or they took the anime and introduced Ash and, and any of those characters per se, um, like Gary or Professor Oak, or whatever, and, and adapted into the movie. No, they took a spin off video game, which majority of Pokemon players probably did not play. Let's be honest here. It's a spin off game. Um, it's got a low like. Like it's probably did well in sales, but nothing in comparison to obviously the mainline games. Um, and it's just, it was supposed to be like a goofy spinoff where you play as Pikachu, who is a detective trying to solve crimes and whatnot. And they adapted it into a more kind of uh, again, lack of a better term, serious movie with actual sort of a plot and investigation to uh, to look into um, using uh, voice actors and real life characters and CGI pokemon but you know kind of presenting them as real life and and if, why like why is that a big deal that it's non-canonical is because there's not much to complain about if they like were to mess up right it's not like oh man ash isn't supposed to wear that kind of hat or you know doesn't wear those kind of shoes or you know that's not what you the that's not the next town you're supposed to go in in pokemon red and blue you're supposed to go through viridian forest um there's no way to get to pewter unless you go through that forest like there was nothing really to complain about because it was one a loose adaptation but also two it's again a spin-off series game adapted into a movie so they had a lot of liberties i think with what they could have done with those characters with the story with the beats and everything like they made it their own and it worked really really well so it wasn't like this is a huge gamble because of like they messed up okay so they messed up it was (laughs) it wasn't like you know, putting people's childhoods at risk because some people are dramatic like that. Like, oh, it ruined my childhood. No, it's not going to do that. Um, the only thing, I guess, that would have been bad if, if they really messed up Pikachu's design. But they didn't. So it worked really, really well in their favor. And so that's why the kind of thing I wanted to bring up with the Netflix live action series. And not to say, like, I have obviously, like, I'm, I'm not trying to come off as, like, I have... The, the ultimate say in what happens or like my opinion is the only right one i'm just this is just my opinion saying you know this is how what i think you know they might want to consider um that could you know probably be beneficial for a lot of people uh and you know if they go a different route hey I, i'm all for it. i'm i'm 
I'm going to obviously give this a shot. I love Pokemon, so they can easily make it like, you know, cartoon drawn on napkin, uh, you know, from their employees and just have a slideshow of that. And I'll be like, yeah, let's watch this. It might be bad, but I'm going to watch it anyway. Uh, I think what they should do for the Netflix series is make it non-canonical, like have their own storylines. At least that's what they should start off with. You know, would it be cool to see Ash in a, in a kind of real life action format or maybe see like Gary or um, Valkner or, you know, Lance in, in a real life action format? Obviously, absolutely. I don't think there's any question about that. People would love to see that. But if they want to temper expectations and they want to make sure that they, they do this right, I I strongly believe that making a non-canonical series would greatly benefit them in the chance of saying, okay, they'll probably get more constructive feedback. Like not just, oh, I hate this because, you know, their design is stupid, whatever. No, it's like, okay, I see what you did here. Maybe the, the, the design of this Pokemon doesn't fit well because of this tone and steam or whatever. Like I just feel like the feedback would be more um, constructive than critical, uh, so to speak, like more more positive than negative. Uh, and it's not like they're really gambling on, uh, like a popularity thing, right? Like if they don't feature, I don't know, Charizard, it's not going to be in the world, right? Even though people love Charizard, I think the fact that they'll give up Charizard just to see live action Pokemon series. And so like, they'll go, okay, did you, what, what Pokemon did you use? Um, does, did you at least, you know, portray them as, you know, as they probably, we would read them about their Pokedex or whatever. Uh, you know, I, I just think there's a there's a lot more that they can have fun with and have more creative stories about if they work on characters that they create themselves. Whatever company is going to oversee this, right? If they make up their own unique characters or their own unique agendas and their own unique subplots and and you know, they can just add Pokémon that will complement that. I think that would do extremely well and will benefit the series in the long run and if they can master that and it gets highly appraised every episode um it's consistent then they can start to tackle i would suggest like in a series of shorts of like lance versus gary or um the battle against whitney and her mill tank or something to that extent uh because I, I i think you need to build up to the canonical stuff before you just dive right into it because then you could really just be risking a lot of um i guess perception of people you know they'll because they're going to look at that stuff critically right like because i was trying to say before like they're going to look at the clothing they're going to look at the pokemon the the moves that they use the types um that are represented uh the environment like people are going are always critical about things that they're used to, that they're comfortable with, that, you know, they've seen time and time and time and time and time again. Uh, so, you know, you, you don't necessarily want to risk that sort of thing right away with a, a huge fan base like Pokemon. So non-canonical stuff would be really, really cool. Um, and then a lot of social media stuff has been kind of going out saying like, oh, I want to see this Pokemon content creator make an appearance, which would be really cool if they did invite Pokemon content creators and they kind of partner them up with their like favorite Pokemon. I think that would be kind of really neat and would go to, it would go to show, uh, you know, that Pokemon does interact and involve their community, um, you know, more than people are, like originally think. There's st- I think there's still like a group of collectors there. Uh, that think like Pokemon, hey, they'll spew out whatever and then don't care about the people because they'll just, they'll know that they buy it, they'll buy it no matter what. No, Pokemon does listen to the players. They may not always agree to its fan base, um, especially with the way sometimes they come out. Uh, but, you know, they do like to, you know, t- treat the fan base every once in a while. Um, so I think that'd be really cool if they were able to get content creators on there to make like, you know, quick cameos or guest appearances or whatnot. Um, but it's really exciting. Uh, I'm I'm really much looking forward to it. I also hope they do make a Detective Pikachu sequel to some extent, because uh, I I really do love that movie, and we do uh, and here at my house we do play it uh, from time to time because uh, it was just that enjoyable. So yeah, a lot of stuff to look forward to. Um, so let me know what you guys think, what your thoughts are on a live action Pokemon series, and what Pokemon you would definitely want 
to see appear in a live action series. Obviously, for me, it's going to be Squirtle, War Tournament, and Blastoise. Like, that's going to be my number one pick. Um, Gengar would be really cool. But I think what I would appreciate is if they started uh, adding in more um, uh, lesser popular Pokemon, like maybe Gulpin or uh, Tynamo or um, I don't know, what's it, a Lilip or something like that. Like Pokemon that people don't normally think a lot about. I think that would just be really, really cool. All right. That kind of starts to wrap things up. Let's, of course, head into our last segment, which is the Pokedex trivia. Or I'll read to you a Pokedex entry from one of its many games that this Pokemon appears in. It's about a mystery Pokemon that you have to take a guess. Now, uh, I will give you a few hints here and there. Not a lot, but a few. Enough for you to at least get an idea of what you're supposed to be guessing. And I will be honest with you. I am going to give you probably a very obscure one because all the other Pokedex entries gives away a detail or its name, which obviously then will lead you to guess it right away. So uh, bear with me as, uh, you know, I try to do the best that I can uh, with the Pokedex entry that you're I'm about to read. It says, if it is attacked by an enemy that is stronger than itself... It feigns injury to fool the enemy and escapes. I'm vague, right? Because that could just be about anybody. Um, I'm going to read it one more time. If it is attacked by an enemy that is stronger than itself, it feigns injury to fool the enemy and escape. Now, I can tell you that this is a monotype Pokemon. However, it has two forms. Uh, the first form shiny is more of like a yellow ish. A body color is yellow. The second form shiny is not that much of a difference. It's like a much, much lighter with some purple hues here and there. Um, trying to think what else these Pokemon, uh, can not evolve by level. They must be evolved by a particular item. Um, it has one version has the hidden ability drought, while the other has the hidden hidden ability, and this is gonna give it away probably, snow warning. I'm gonna leave it at that. So without further ado, lock in your answer. You have it ready, you have it set, because I'm gonna go ahead and just reveal it. It is none other. Then Pokemon number 37, Vulpix. Uh, I will say this about Vulpix. I did not begin to appreciate Vulpix until the Alolan form came out. I don't know what it was about the Alolan Sandshrew and Alolan Vulpix, but I love their ice forms. And so after, you know, kind of playing with that for a while in uh, Sun and Moon, I went back and looked at Cantonian Vulpix and it is a cute and adorable looking Pokemon. However, I still prefer the Ice version. I still prefer Alolan Vulpix over Cantonian Vulpix. And um, what was I going to say? Oh, the uh, obviously the item that they have to evolve with uh, is a Fire Stone, at least for Cantonian Vulpix. An Ice Stone with the Alolan Vulpix. And the... Uh, oh, the, the Pokedex stuff. All the other Pokedex entries literally mentions about its tail. It has something about like it's one tail splits into six or it's six tails does this. And I'm like, I think if I read that, everyone will get it right away. So that's why I had to avoid uh, those Pokedex uh, entries. But here's a bit of trivia. Seems to be quite a bit of uh, bullet points here. The beta Pokemon names in red and blue listed Vulpix as Foxfire, which makes sense it is kind of like a firefox vulpix can be seen as parallel to growlith both are generation one pokemon that evolve once via a firestone vulpix is exclusive to pokemon green blue silver leaf green and soul silver while growlith is red blue uh japan blue gold fire red and heart gold growlith has a 75 percent chance of being male while vulpix has a 75 chance of being female 
That's interesting. They are both in the field egg group, can have flash fire as their ability, and are yellow when shiny from Generation 3 on. Furthermore, both are based primarily on canine-like creatures of Japanese folklore. Vulpix from the Kitsun, Growlithe from the Shish- Shisa. Uh, Alolan Vulpix can be seen as a parallel to Alolan Sandshrew. Both were initially introduced in Generation 1 and got Alolan forms in Pokemon Sun and Moon. Both Pokemon are ice types, with Vulpix being exclusive to Sun and Sandshrew being exclusive to Moon. Furthermore, both Pokemon evolve when exposed to an ice stone. Vulpix is the only Pokemon with a base stat total of 299. Uh, yay for Vulpix. Vulpix and Ninetales share their category with the Fennekin evolutionary line Nicket and Thievul. They are all known as the Fox Pokemon. Vulpix has the lowest base HP of all fire type Pokemon. And Alolan Vulpix and Alolan Raichu are the only regional form with specific names, Keo Keo and Hodad, respectively. I don't know exactly what that means, but I will take their word for it. Vulpix is a very cool Pokemon. Again, I prefer Alolan Vulpix. If you want to disagree otherwise, please tell me which one you prefer. The Cantonian Vulpix or the Alolan Vulpix? Um, I'd be very interested to hear what your thoughts are. But yeah, that is the Pokemon for this episode. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me, for talking with me and listening to my thoughts and whatnot. Please feel free to share any of your uh, thoughts and your comments and whatnot. Um, you can follow me on any of social, well, most social media things. But however, I'm just going to mainly promote Twitter and Instagram. You can find me on there uh, both as Spartan Strike 7 uh, or you can also follow my YouTube channel, which is basically just these, as of right now, it's just these uh, podcast episodes uploaded on there. But that's also going to be Spartan Strike 7 as well. Um, or if you want to write to me an email, uh, comment about anything that you've heard in this episode, or uh, leave any feedback, any ideas, suggestions, whatnot, uh, you can write out to me at SpartanStrike07 at gmail.com. And that pretty much wraps up this episode. So I appreciate it again one more time for all of your guys' support. Um, and I'm looking forward to next week where we can talk a lot about Pokemon Go and Pokemon Masters and anything and everything else Pokemon. Oh, 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 oh,